Some scholars today take the position that the Bible is a biased book, and that it cannot be trusted without confirmed evidence from extra-biblical sources. In other words, the Bible is guilty until proven innocent, and a lack of outside evidence places a biblical account in doubt. The standard is hypocritical compared to other ancient documents, even though many, if not most, have a religious element. They are considered to be accurate unless there is evidence to show that they are not. Although it is not possible to verify every incident in the Bible, the discoveries of archaeology since the mid-1800s have demonstrated the reliability and plausibility of the Bible narrative. Here are just a few examples. In the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 6, we have an account of the Israelites defeating the city of Jericho when they came into the Promised Land after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. According to the biblical account, the Israelites marched around the city once a day for six days. On the seventh day, they encircled the city seven times. On the final time around, the priests blew the trumpets, and the people shouted, and the walls fell flat. The archaeological evidence that validates this biblical event was a combined effort of both the German excavation team in the early 1900s and a British archaeologist in the 1950s. The first major excavation of Jericho was performed between 1907 and 1909. The excavation team found piles of mud bricks at the base of the mound the city was built on. Almost 50 years later, Kathleen Kenyon re-excavated the site with modern methods and proved that these bricks were from the city wall which had collapsed when the city was destroyed. The story in the Bible goes on to say that when the city walls collapsed, the Israelites stormed the city and set it on fire. Archaeologists found evidence for a massive destruction by fire, just as the Bible relates. The Bible says that Sarah, Abraham, Isaac, Rebekah, Leah, and Jacob were buried in Hebron, in a cave purchased by Abraham, Genesis 23. Traditionally, this cave has been located below the sacred precinct of the Friend of the Merciful One God in Hebron, today a Muslim mosque. References as early as the 2nd century BC testify that this is the authentic location of the burial place of the patriarchs. The cave was explored by the Augustan Canyons in 1119, at which time they found the bones of the patriarchs. Many of the people mentioned in the Bible are confirmed in sources outside the Bible. In the case of royalty, many times a likeness of the individual has been recovered. Over 50 persons named in the Old Testament are known outside the Bible, and we have likenesses of 12 of them. Some 27 people named in the New Testament are known from other records, with six likenesses surviving, four of them Roman emperors. Quite a number of biblical structures have been excavated. Some of the most interesting are the following. The Tower of Babel in Babylon, where language was confused, Genesis 11, 1, 19. The Pool of Gibeon, where the forces of David and Ishbosheth fought during the struggle for the kingship of Israel. 2 Samuel 2, 12-32 The theater at Ephesus, where the riots of the silversmiths occurred, Acts 19, 29 Samson pushed with all of his might, and down came the temple of the rulers, of the Philistines, and all the people in it, Judges 16, 29, and 30 Sodom and Gomorrah The ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah have been discovered southeast of the Dead Sea. The modern names of Babadre, thought to be Sodom, and Numeria, thought to be Gomorrah. Both places were destroyed at the same time by an enormous conflagration. The destruction debris was about three feet thick. Archaeologists discovered in the cemetery at Babab Dre that the buildings used to bury the dead were burned by a fire that started on the roof. The only explanation for this bizarre event is that the burning debris must have fallen on top of the building from the air. This mysterious event was clearly explained in the Bible and validated by archaeological findings. In Genesis 19.24, the Bible says, Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. The name of Israel's second king, David, appears in two 9th century BC texts, the Taldan inscription and the Moabite stone. Shishashk was the first Egyptian king to be mentioned by name in the Bible and the first foreign king in the Bible for whom we have extra-biblical evidence. The Moabite stone was an extraordinary find in its complete work. Joseph was Imhotep of Egypt. National Geographic, in January 1995, describes a man called Imhotep, who saved his country from a famine. Imhotep was the architect thought to be responsible for the idea of creating Pharaoh's tomb completely from stone. He was known as a sculptor, a priest, a healer, and considered to be the preeminent genius of the Old Kingdom. Once again, Imhotep had saved his country from a famine. There are many similarities between Imhotep and Joseph from the Bible.
Here are just a few. They both were second in command under Pharaoh. They both lived to 110 years of age. They were both great architects. They both stored up seven years of plenty. They both saw seven years of famine. They both interpreted dreams. They both built pyramids and palaces. They were both physicians. They both instituted an income tax of one-fifth. They both had a knowledge of astrology. They were both educated men. They were legendary historians. And both was one of 12 siblings. The Hebrew Exodus. Expulsion of Hycasus lived around Averis in Egypt. In Egyptian documents and wall paintings, Joseph's court seal has been found in Averis. Also, A, cry out, to L, one of the first letters indicating the Hebrew God, has been found inscribed on Egyptian walls. Averis is also the location of Ramses, the place where the Israelites settled, Genesis 47:11, and where they departed from, Exodus 12:37. Yigal Yadin would complete the first proof of a biblical passage by finding the city gate of Gezer, which King Solomon built in 960 BC, and the Bible described in 1 Kings 9.15. In 2007, Nehemiah's wall was found. This discovery likewise caused a firestorm of activity among Bible skeptics who had continually pointed to the lack of archaeological evidence supporting the book of Nehemiah's claim that the returning exiled Jews rebuilt Jerusalem's city walls and restored the gates of the temple. In present-day Jordan, scientists have found a 10th century B.C. copper production center that coincides with the rule of the biblical king of Israel, King Solomon, and his mines. A spike in metallurgic activity also coincides with the rise and influence of a rival tribe. This coincides with biblical description. The Dead Sea Scrolls One of the greatest finds in regards to the reliability of the Holy Scriptures was the finding of the Dead Sea Scrolls. According to the Bible, the Old Testament was written between 1,500 and 400 years before Jesus was born. Therefore, it is a great cause for faith when over 300 prophecies written between 1,500 and 400 years before Jesus was born were fulfilled by him. Skeptics accused early Christians of altering the Old Testament just after Jesus' time in order to make it appear as though prophecies had come true. In 1947, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, it blew a hole in the skeptics' argument. The Dead Sea Scrolls contained all of the Old Testament books except Esther. Esther had no prophecy about the coming Messiah, so the hundreds of prophecies about Jesus are still there. The Dead Sea Scrolls were buried somewhere around 100 to 200 years before Jesus was born. We now have copies that predate the church by hundreds of years, but are word for word the same as our Old Testament. The Dead Sea Scrolls prove the Bible is authentic. The Bible has been proven. Time and time again, the mountain of evidence shows the Bible's narratives and detailed accounts were accurate and have been fully supported. Archaeology proves the Bible is true.